Yes. Hi, Dr. Roberts. Thank you for joining us. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this webinar. We have wonderful Dr. Roberts with us, and she is going to take us through a little bit about the technology of Aerolase, Sente, as well as Scientist Sispera. And she will also be talking about generating review revenue in this changing last landscape. And one of the things we've discussed with many physicians and office managers over the past several months is really looking at how this can be incorporated into your new practice, into your practices as they are opening up now. And we will head it over to Dr. Roberts to take us through and let us begin. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Deepa. And it's, um, this is a great subject that I'm very passionate about. And I um, say hello to everyone. And you're spending your after work hours with me. And I appreciate that. So let's get right into it. Can we forward the slide, please? You should have control for that, Dr. Roberts. Are you not? Yeah, I, no. Here we go. There we go. OK. So you introduced me, and I practice in Rancho Mirage, California. And uh, there it is. There's my title slide. This is me. But most importantly, I like everybody to save the date, because hopefully, if we're COVID free, um, we'd love to have you come to the Generational Dermatology Symposium. And that's February 12th through the 14th. It's actually President's Day weekend. And if you're on this webinar, then you automatically save 50%. So please um, take advantage of that, and we hope to see you there. Well, you know, much has been discovered about uh, pharmaceutical options, and we know about injectables, we know about volume, but what about when um, patients want something other than medication? There's a great movement now for naturals. What about the patient who doesn't want a pharmaceutical but might want something natural after her procedure? Well, this company, these two companies, I think is the perfect marriage. Aerolase and Sente um, go so well together for so many reasons that we're gonna discuss today. And, and the challenge for us all practicing is how far can we take the patient care with the right devices and the right topicals? What's going to give you the edge? What's gonna make you stand out from everyone else around you? And I wanted to throw in a COVID pearl. It's really important now when people aren't um, really wanting to go travel around a lot that you have one point of service. So it's really nice for those of you who aren't carrying any types of cosmeceuticals, this is a time to really think about it because your patients really would love to get everything right in your office. So what's better than synergy? Synergy of combinations. When you get synergy, you get new treatment possibilities, right? But yet you also get safety and efficacy. So Aerolase has a standalone product, works excellent on the dermal layers. Sente, as a standalone product, works excellent on the epidermal layers. Then they're both great at what they do alone, but put them together and that's when the real wows happen. And that's been the case in my practice. And what I'm sharing with you today are really my experiences with um, in practice and kind of my journey through dermatology, having not, um, you know, having been there for the whole period. This is the Aerolase Neo Elite at work in a skin of color patient. And I, I, you know, it's so interesting in these Zoom meetings. So I want to say by show of hands, you know, how many people have uh, an active skin of color patient, a practice space. And, um, you know, this is something that is really important because um, here I'm doing a, a, I'm doing a, a peel. And what I've done on her is uh, I just finished the Neoli treatment. And now I'm immediately after doing the treatment, applying um, a chemical peel. And you can see how comfortable she is. She's a type five skin and, and you know, no fuss, no bother. So what it has open for me are things that I could only do in my type one, uh, two patients, you know, 
resurface, follow up with a chemical peel, and these kind of um, st you know stage combined procedures. Now I'm able to do. And I remember when I first started working with this device, I was like, really, I can do that? And um, because it's just kind of unheard of to laser a face and then peel it in skin of color. But the fact is you can. And we'll talk about reasons why. And, you know, um, our patients actually feel what we feel, what, kind of the frustration that we felt like we don't really have a great modality to go to for skin of color. That's what our patients are feeling because they've gone around to doctors and, and, and derms, estheticians, plastics, everything. And people are saying, oh, no, 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 no I, I don't really think we laser is not for you. And, um, and even though times are changing, um, there is still a thought out there that laser is a no-no in skin of color. But yet, you know, they're reading in all the glossies and all the magazines about these new techniques and on blogs. And, and it's really kind of sad because the skin of, skin of color patients are feeling a little left out, right? They're like, well, why can't I do these procedures? I'm reading about them everywhere, you know? Um, so there was just overall frustration in all parts. And that is why um, this article is so important. It's a JAMA article from 2019. And it talks about the assessment of black patients' perception of their dermatology care. And in general, um, you know, black patients um, satisfaction would increase if the dermatologist underwent um, enhanced residency training programs in skin of color. Because let's face it, everyone can work on skin of color. You don't have to be a skin of color individual to be trained in skin of color. And in fact, there are some skin of color individuals who aren't trained in skin of color. So it's not really uh, about that. It's about having good training, cultural competency, um, and really understanding um, skin of color. So there's an increasing need for uh, formal education um, in treating skin of color. Okay, and this is pretty much what I spoke to um, before, but the challenge was, let's say 10 years ago, the challenge is what go-to device do I have for my skin of color patient? For example, we all know we can pick up a can of liquid nitrogen and freeze that actinic keratosis and it's going to freeze and go away. There's not a doubt in our mind. It is our go-to device. But we didn't really have one like that for skin of color, which is why I was so excited after seeing the technology um, from the Neo, I was like, uh, I really was blown away and I felt, wow, this is perfect. Finally, in my practice lifetime, we'll have a device that is a go-to, that can be the gold standard, that everyone, you know, residents and, and, and veterans can pick up and use it and get a, a, a safe, repeatable, efficacious results. And that's what we have. Because physicians, we wanna feel confident, right? Just as I said, just as confident with, as, with the laser as with the liquid nitrogen. You definitely don't wanna create a complication and in these economic times, uh, we really can't afford, especially when you're just coming out, to be purchasing a lot of different devices. So it would really be nice if you could have one laser which treated many conditions versus you know, one for this and one for that, one for that. You, you have your, your credibility, education, degrees are on the line. So you, you don't um, want any snake oil. You need to have something with proven results. And as I alluded to earlier, it's a great opportunity um, for everyone because of the demographics, which we're gonna look at, that you, you can build a diverse practice. You can build a, a skin of color practice, um, a robust practice where you have something for everyone. It's important not to have these types of things happen. And this is what has scared our patients for decades. We see chemical peel burn, we see um, ochronosis due to the overuse of hydroquinone, which frequently is used post-procedural. Let's say if you don't you know, make the, um, the finish line, 
let's so to say, with a device, then you use um, hydroquinone products to try to you know bleach them the rest of the way. And what happens are these terrible cases of you know hypersensitivity and 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 uh, topical ochronosis due to overuse. This is very common, probably the most common uh, light laser complication in California is this one, the IPL, which is most frequently used to remove hair and results in this type of classic uh, pattern. And then, you know, the worst thing for skin of color is not hyperpigmentation, it actually has been hypopigmentation. And this complication you see on a uh, Fitzpatrick 5 with these hypopigmented macules that happen because of just poor laser settings. So these are the type of things that we don't want and we can be educated to make sure it doesn't happen. But our, our patients need to be educated first because it's not, this population has not historically been marketed to. So, you know, it's very important to have a consultation with your skin of color patients and address the specific concerns, the specific complications, which might not be the same ones that happen in um, the lighter skin types. So why Aralase, Sente, and Suspera? We're gonna talk about them all. Well, this is really a great trio because it opens up new treatment possibilities. And again, how are you going to differentiate yourself from the derm on the corner and around the corner and down the street, right? How are you going to stay profitable in these challenging times? Um, patient dissatisfaction is very clear. We know that our patients um, you know, practice hop and jump around going from doctor to doctor. Um, sometimes you know, it may be the office, sometimes the provider, but um, whatever the reason they leave. And the patient experience and satisfaction is very important. Retaining your patients are very important. Why is retention so important? Retention is important not only because of the existing patient, but a, re, a patient that you retain is usually a happy patient, and that happy patient will go out and refer you to other patients. Again, you want to be the leader in your in your field. Reputation is very important, and um, you know besides just the social media Yelp stuff that we have to deal with, um, which you know is a mixed bag of disgruntled patients and sometimes some true things. But um, you know just your local um, reputation in town is really important. Um, the thing I like about this trio is that it helps to diversify our revenue streams. What do I mean by that? You don't want to get caught in the eggs in one basket syndrome, where you're just like a medical office and that's all you do is medical medical, or your aesthetic office and that's all you do is aesthetic aesthetic, um, or you know you're an office and you don't do products at all, or you're just a laser practice, or you're just not a laser practice. In this day and age, and especially I think COVID has shown us that. Um, it's very, we need to have a thought in terms of business that we diversify our revenue streams so you're getting income from different, you know, different pots, so to speak. And um, we may suffer if we have all our eggs in one basket. And um, what happened with, um, with COVID is that also, um, you know, industry changes. So that incentivized um, Sente and Suspira to do an online affiliate program. And that was directly due to COVID. So um, just briefly, um, this is what it is. It provides direct access to the products. So the companies actually ship directly to the patients. And then you have a code and that's kind of your ID. So your you're compensated for this. You're not looped out. So the patients pay and you get a monthly compensation for this. Um, it's really great because it, it drives sales to your website. And then Sente provides the inventory and the order management support. So it's really a win-win for them and for the provider. So this is some of the other qualities. There's 30-day return policies. There's 24-7 access, easy re repurchase, and then all of the bells and whistles, which are nice to keep your patients looped in emails, communication, just to really increase the engagement
between you know your patients and your office so this is all done not to take patients away but to really support your practice and and you know we're so busy and have so much to do it's a nice because it's like another bell and whistle that you have for your practice and they're out there giving patients all this information talking about new products so it, it can really relieve a lot of, of pressure for the office so I would recommend everybody uh, check into this especially now when you know we're seeing less patients because of COVID and um, we need all the help we can get let's just say that and there are the contacts and I'm sure that we can get those to you if you're interested so now let's take a little dive into the physiological differences between skin of color and this is really the neat stuff right we know that one in four skin of, pa skin of color patients want aesthetic treatments. That's a very high number, okay? And what are the things that they're wanting? Number one, all across the globe, here in the States, Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, it's the same. Hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation is the most common skin care problem globally. So you wanna have a device that deals with it. You want to have protocols that deal with it because at the end of the day, that's what people want. Acne is also very big. Melasma, post-inflammatory, hyperpigmentation, PIH, and hypopigmentation, hair removal, and in skin of color, there's something else that's very important. We're going to talk about it a little later. It's pseudofolliculitis barbie or PFB. This 40% um, this group is estimated to grow to 50% by 2045. And of course, that's just in the States because we know when we have a global lens on, on, on skin of color, it is 80% of the global population or skin of color uh, between African-American, East Indian, Asian, et cetera, et cetera. So, it really is now every day, every dermatologist should really know, um, every plastic surgeon, everyone who's dealing with skin should really know, um, have a good education in skin of color. Well, no matter what our skin color, everyone has the same number of melanocytes. However, genetically determined, the melanocytes are programmed to produce certain types of melanin, and that what makes us all different. Eumelanin is very dense and very brown to black, and pheomelanin is not very dense, almost translucent. It's kind of yellow to red. <clears throat> and skin tone, skin tone determinants, you know, lighter skin versus darker skin, is really, again, not the melanocyte count, but it's the amount and organization of melanin within the melanosomes and the keratinocytes. Also, it's the quality and quantity of melanin produced rather than the number of melanocytes. So when you see these two schematics, on the one on top, you can see melanosomes in deeply pigmented skin. And you see they're, they're, they're very you know, dispersed very evenly, um, very thick. Um, you really don't see any areas that the pigment hasn't occupied. It's a dark pigment, and this is in a dark complexion person. Now look at the melanin within the melanosomes and the, the schematic below. These are melanosomes in a lightly pigmented skin, and they are not occupying the whole space. They are, it's uh, very thin and very, um, very, uh, structural, not really dispersed at all, and also very light. So simply put, this is our skin color. There are some other epidermal variances in that the African American has a thicker stratum corneum than the Caucasian counterpart, 22 layers as compared to 17. Why is this important? We'll get to that. It becomes important because of barrier. And uh, tubal or transepidermal water loss is greater in African American, um, Latino, and Asian skin than in Caucasian skin. And why is that important? Because impaired barrier function uh, contributes a lot to sensitivity and, and topical stimulation. And, um, so it's important that to consider um, you know, irritants and, and the products that we're putting on um, really have to be tested and all skin types, you just have to have products in skin of color that have been tested in skin of color, especially when you're doing combination treatments, because 
you can call it, you know, sensitive if you, you know, that's one way you can express it. But the barrier is a little trickier in, in skin of color patients. When we move to the dermis, the dermis is thicker and more compact, and the superficial blood vessels are more prominent and dilated. Why is this important? This is important, especially with laser, because when you put a laser and you're having, um, you know, focal light going down to the dermis and in the area of the blood vessels, you have to really have safety features and be careful because if the, the blood is heating up and spilling over, then that's a possible culprit of PIH. So um, again, the technology of the laser is very important that you don't cause problems. And in the past, um, you know, before this, um, 650 1064 technology we had problems in this area on all different you know levels of the skin problems were going on african americans also have larger sebaceous glands leading to oil production so we know that in um skin of color has delayed photo aging and uh skin of color hyperpigments easier from injury and inflammation okay um, there's more epidermal melanin, there's an increased risk of long-lasting, permanent hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation, and there's an exaggerated response of skin fibroblasts to injury and insult, and that translates into increased risk of scarring. So treatment options need to be developed and need to be used to comply with these types of safety needs. Nuances in skin of color so we have emerging skin types you know basically every minute and the the um dna picture of the world is not what it used to be where everything was so neat and organized and i'll use this expression if you've heard me speak you've heard me say this beware of the oklahoma blonde there she is carrie underwood she is a native american because there are issues with mixed ethnicity and it's not always what it appears. So here's the Oklahoma blonde as a child and look at her Native American mother, okay? So the old days where we looked at someone and said, oh, you're a Fitzpatrick too, those days are over. You cannot tell a person's skin type by their phenotype and that's the take home message. If this is one of the top things you get at the lecture, I, I would please me very much. You just cannot use Fitzpatrick. You have to go deeper. And there are all sorts of brown and black people out there running around that have blonde hair and blue eyes. That brings me to my skin type classification system. And this I developed in 2008 and it was, to measure and help us with issues of procedural safety in, in all skin types, but specifically to protect the unknown or the anonymous skin of color patient, that blonde Native American you saw earlier. It's measured by four elements. And the bottom line is we want the patient's skin to do the talking. It really doesn't matter to me in terms of laser complications about your race, your gender, your age, your ethnicity. This, this has, no, um, has nothing to do with it all. It's about what is your skin going to do when I cut you, when the laser is put on you, when I put liquid nitrogen on your skin, what is your skin going to express? And these concerns are unique for different populations and we have emerging skin types from these mixed ethnicity children that can lead to unpredictable outcomes so i developed this scale and you can see it in front of you and we'll just read over it real quickly the scale has four elements fitzpatrick is very important and it is it measures the the burning um, of skin phototypes, and it is included in my scale because it's, it's important. It's not the whole picture, but it's important. So we go from the Fitzpatrick one, which is white skin, always burns, and Fitzpatrick six, which is dark brown, black skin. It, he didn't get it right on the never burns part because all skin burns, but suffice it to say, maybe doesn't burn as obviously, but all skin does burn. 
Um, in the Roberts hyperpigmentation scale, we go from age zero, which is a spot of hypopigmentation, to age six, which is severe and permanent. When we look at pigmentation, we look at it in terms of its transientness. Is it is it transient or is it permanent, right? Um, and clearly, you know, when things are permanent, they become more severe. And, um, and typically a year is about the rule of thumb for, you know, for the whole specialty. The third element honors um, Dick Glogau, and that's the Glogau photo aging scale, another really important scale that was introduced in 92. And um, this, uh, the G1 is no wrinkles, early photo aging. And the G4 is, you know, that, that face that you see that's completely wrinkles, severe photo aging. We all know, have that face in our mind. Um, and then last, um, I had to develop a scarring scale because again, these are the problems that happen in skin of color, right? Hyperpigmentation and um, of scarring. And S0 is atrophy, actually the depressed scar, which can happen um, in procedural um, dermatology for skin of color. And it goes all the way up, S1 is none. And then it goes all the way up to the keloidal nodule. So people have asked sometimes, what's the difference between the keloid and the keloidal nodule? Well, a keloid has boundaries. A keloid has gone beyond the boundaries of the scar, but has its own boundaries. A keloidal nodule indicates a keloid in a very uh, fast, replication rate. So a little nodule shows that you really have a lot of active fibroblast activity and we have to shut that down. So let's go back to the mother. When you look at the mother of the, the blonde Native American baby, well, how would we skin type her? What would be her Robert's skin type classification? Well, there it is. You see it, it's like a code. It's one, one kind of bar going across. And to translate it, it's a Fitzpatrick four, hyperpigmentation two, glow down one, scarring three. So what does that mean? That means she's light brown and her skin burns minimally and tans well. She's a Fitzpatrick four. She's got minimal and permanent hyperpigmentation, which is H2. How do we know that? Well, <coughs> excuse me. We've seen it on physical exam. We've looked at her and her skin and we see she has hyperpigmentation. She's a glow gown one, she's got no wrinkles. She has um, early photo aging and she is a scarring four, excuse me, three. She's got hypertrophic NRA scars. So again, she's Fitzpatrick 4, H2, G1, S3, and that's the translation. So I hope that you can find that helpful. And it really has helped me a lot. A lot, helped me a lot to stay out of trouble. Remember, you cannot judge a book by the cover and you certainly can't judge a patient by the color of their skin. So what are some myths about skin of color? Here we go. Melasma is a minor concern for skin of color with limited treatments, right? Because our poor patients have been told that there's nothing we can do about that. We've also been told that skin of color is a homogenous group. Everybody's the same and, you know, dark skin, light skin, it doesn't matter. It's all, you know, brown, black skin. Not true. And, oh, this is the big one, that individual skin of color do not need sunscreen. I think most of us on the call know that that is not true. Laser treatments cannot be used on darker skin. I spoke to that. And only medical providers of skin of color can treat skin of color. So all of these are false. These are all myths because um, there's a beautiful paper that was done by Dr. Alexis et al. And this is in the JDD, Journal of Drugs and Dermatology 2019, last year. And it dispels all the myths about these things. Skin of color needs sunscreen. Dermal fillers and modulators are definitely necessary in darker skin. Laser can be treated in darker skin. And that's why we're here today to spread the word that there is a safe laser in skin of color. And then of course, all medical providers can understand and be very competent in skin of color. So that's just silly. 
um, sunscreens are important. And I love this slide because it just goes to show you that yes, here's a Fitzpatrick five patient who clearly burns. And you see on her forehead and malar area that um, she has um, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And know that before the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, she had erythema. And why did that happen? She had a photosensitivity reaction. So, you know, know those photosensitizers, hydrochlorothiazide, minocycline, some of the NSAIDs um, don't pair well with um, the sun. And this can happen. And all of our patients need to be on sunscreen. Now let's talk about some of the comparative modalities and the limitations for treating skin of color. So um, commonly I'm asked the question, well, what about the PICO um, second laser for pigmentation? You know, why can't I have that one? The PICO laser is great. Um, it's great for tattoos. But what I'm always trying to, you know, talk about is that one workhorse laser. What's the one laser that you can have in your practice that can do a multitude of things? And the Pico is not that laser, okay? Why? Because it really does not have enough power to, or pulse width to break down the deeper dermal pigment or vasculature. So when we look at the, the power of the jewels, we see the Pico comes in at less than one joule per centimeter squared. That it, that's at 850 picoseconds, which I'm going to get back to. That's a little bit of a problem too, versus the, the 41 joules. Okay, so you've got one compared to 41. So needless to say, um, which laser is more powerful? So the 1064, the 650 microsecond laser is much more powerful a laser than the Pico. And that's why it not only deals with superficial pigmentation, but it also can get some of that dermal pigmentation, especially what you see with melasma. Now, in terms of the time, the thermal relaxation time is about 800. So the Pico laser is a little bit over that 800. And you know, when using a laser and skin of color, you really want to stay under the 800, under the thermal relaxation reaction time. So, and the reason that is, is because once um, you get past the thermal relaxation time, then you start can get, you can get complications. So um, the Pico is great again, like for tattoos, epidermal pigment, but it lacks a sufficient pulse width to coagulate those dermal vessels, such as rosacea. And that's why um, the Neo is so great with some of our um, vascular things, such as rosacea, you can do small veins with it, um, et cetera. We're gonna continue to see that. So um, it's technology really that has come, you know, I say, I wish I could have um, had this laser in my whole practice, but the fact is I couldn't have because we didn't have the technology. But now we do. The wavelength is 1064, the pulse is 650, it's collimated, and it's chromophore selective, and we're gonna get into all of this. So this is really kind of the take-home slide when, you, uh, when you're talking about the science. The Neo Elite uses a deep penetrating width. So let's take a look. And here we have on the y-axis, we have the different levels, the stratum corneum, epidermis, dermis, and downward, okay? On the x-axis, we have a depth of penetration by the various lasers that we're all familiar with. So as we march along, you can kind of see um, where these lasers lie. And what should be very apparent is that the last laser, which is a 1064 YAG, penetrates very deeply. So it's able to coagulate these dermal vessels. You know, the diode can't quite get there. The 755, again, it's great. It's under the thermal relaxation time, but can't quite get there. And so on and so on. So when you're, you know, thinking about where, you know, the entity, you know, what you're trying to treat, you have to really think about what is the wavelength that's going to optimally treat that condition. Let's take a look. I was speaking earlier about the thermal relaxation time, and let's take a look. This is a great slide. 
Why does it look so comfortable? Why do the patients feel no pain? Well, the pulse enters the skin so quickly under the thermal relaxation time that it avoids pain. So coming under there does a number of things. It, you avoid pain, you avoid complications, but yet the pulse is powerful enough. Remember 41 joules, it's powerful enough and deep enough to really be effective. And this is what it looks like. Here we have the pulse time going in microseconds on this x-axis and Typically, the traditional laser technology is right in this area, and, and that's why it hurts so bad. You know, the, the line, a uh, hot rubber band on your you know, skin, well, usually it's a little bit more than a hot rubber band. Um, these treatments can be very painful and prevent our patients from returning, which is not going to help you, especially when you're doing stage laser procedures. But the needle comes right in here. There's the relaxation time at 800, and uh, it comes in right under it. So this is really everything. In terms of the technology and how it's able to do what it does, this is like the secret sauce. This is why it's able to do this. And I'm just going to repeat it again, though I've said it many times. It's 41 joules, very powerful, versus the Pico, which is one joule. It's going into the deep dermis where all the vessels are. And it's coming in under the thermal relaxation time of 800 at 650 microseconds. And that's how it's able to be painless, to be effective, and no side effects. There's some other unique features. There's a collimated beam, which um, it makes it very easy because the distance from the handpiece to the skin doesn't matter. And you can use the laser at different angles. And, and when you change your angle, the fluence remains fixed. So in that way, it's very user friendly and you know your hand doesn't get tired and you don't have to worry. So it's, it's, it's enhanced efficacy, safety, and versatility. So by show of hands, I can't see any of the hands, but I'll ask anyway. Do you know the chromophore of your device? Did anyone ever think in chromophores? I don't think many of us did, and it's really important to think in chromophores. You know, what is the chromophore of the device that you're treating with? Chromophores are important. And this is another winning feature of the Neo Elite because the Neo Elite addresses each chromophore in the skin. And why do we care? We care because of this slide. It's going to tell us why we care. Water is the chromophore, okay? So it addresses fine lines and wrinkles, sagging skin, skin tone, and texture. And what about the chromophore melanin? And why is that important? Well, melanin is a chromophore of sunspots, melasma, PIH, and also the chromophore for hair, which makes this a fabulous treatment for pseudo-folliculitis barbie in a skin of color patient because it addresses so many of the causative factors. And then we talked about hemoglobin, right? Blood. So it can also address rosacea, spider veins, angiomas, and acne. So this is very important. And this is why I can treat so many things because it really connects with these chromophores. We kind of went through this, but it safely penetrates and we see the beam coming through. And because of the, each chromophore that it interacts with, it can take care of skin tone and texture because of the water, pigment melasma, because of the melanin moving down into the dermis, we get the blood vessels tightening and hair removal. So it's, it's just a phenomenal laser. And finally, we have a device and we've got protocols that we can use. I have 
seen a lot of devices come and go, but this is truly the gold standard laser for, trend, for skin of color. It's the gold standard laser because it can be used to treat so many of the key conditions in skin of color and uh, conditions that we never had a laser for. And it's incredibly uh, safe and repeatable results and just uh, very user-friendly. This is a uh, supplement in the JDD from last year, and I recommend that you read that. The faculty were great. They're all listed here. And we have really great practical tips in this supplement. So what are the aging concerns in skin of color? Well, we know that they're different in types one to three than four to six. And up at the lady on top is uh, Fitzpatrick one or two. And we see that Caucasian aging usually presents itself with a lot of photo damage and a lot of fine writings. And this is what we're looking at. And the African-American can be 10 to 20 years later uh, delay in aging, depending upon how uh, she or he, you know, cared for their skin, depending on where they live, you know, definitely your skin is a lot more damaged in the sun belt than not. Um, but those, uh, very rarely do um, African-American women come in complaining of wrinkles. What the African-American woman will come in and complain of is an uneven skin tone. And that, that's really the bane of the African-American uh, female existence is, is the skin tone uneven, shadows, pigmentation, little growths on the skin we call dermatosis papulosa nigra, little seborrheic keratoses. So this patient really wants to have even, clear skin, skin they can wear out in public without having to cover with makeup. The Asian and the Hispanic patients um, usually have very um, distinct um, solar lentigenes, also called actinic lentigenes, and we know them in Asia as Hori's macules, and these very discreet brown um, spots on the cheeks, the forehead, the hands, um, make the skin look mottled, and we call this entity mottled hyperpigmentation. There's also pigmented seborrheic keratosis. So the, the concerns are really different. Again, Asian, Hispanic, not as much of the, of the, uh, the photo aging, the fine lines uh, problems that we see in skin of color. So how are we gonna approach it? Well, we wanna get the best results possible, but we don't wanna injure anything. And then we also don't wanna create any PIH and scarring. So here's a little pause for everyone. Here's a true false question. Transepidermal water loss tends to be greater in African American, Latino, and Asian skin. Everybody's got the answer because everybody's been paying attention, right? And the answer is true. Tool is increased in all of those populations beyond Caucasian skin. And that's why we have to be very careful and considerate about our skincare and what are we using to help with our tool. We'll move into the sente portion of this presentation. And this is called Drown the Dysfunction of Dehydration. And we're going to talk about what I didn't know until um, you know, late in my medical education that heparin sulfate was a master hydrator. It really is quite interesting, this molecule. And we'll see why in the next coming slides. Um, but a little bit first about Sente. Um, Sente is a privately held aesthetic company and very uh, high level biotechnology. And they focus on glycosaminoglycans. And that's the, you know, the ground substance, the extracellular matrix, there's many names for it. Um, but it's that which gives skin integrity. And the creation of this heparin sulfate analog was bioengineered. So it 
it, it's not a naturally occurring molecule, but it was bi bioengineered from the naturally occurring HSA. Okay, so it's a dynamic family. You've heard of the, some of the other members in the family, dermatan sulfate, chondroitin, keratin, hyaluronic acid. These are all part of the ECM, of the ground substance. And particularly, heparin sulfate attracts and retains water. So it's very lipophilic and it's a natural hydrator. It helps modulate cell proliferation and differentiation. So very important in healthy cell development. Um, when we talk about renewing skin, young, healthy skin, it works on all of the renewal processes. It facilitates cell matrix adhesion and assembly for good skin integrity. Remember, we're talking about the barrier, right? It binds numerous extracellular proteins. And very importantly, it downregulates the pro-inflammatory mediators and restores water balance, restores a normal tool. Now, we know that skin of color has a higher tool, right? So just imagine when these pro-inflammatory mediators get going, um, you can really have um, a less than optimal situation in the skin. So this is so nice that, that the heparin sulfate really can calm the skin down and help restore the barrier because skin of color already has a barrier that is less than optimal. And that's very important and could be, you know, as we, you know, look deeper in this evolving sub subject can actually, you know, be some of the problems with some of the complications that we see, have seen in skin of color, you know, if not, that barrier is not dealt with. Um, let's look at it. So here we go. Basically what I said, it decreases inflammation by downregulating um, pro-inflammatory mediators. It delivers deep hydration below the epidermis right? Because this is all happening on a dermal level. And then it activate, activates your own growth factors to stimulate pro-collagen and pro-elastin. So for a healthier, younger uh, skin. I think we can, this is the molecule for those of you who Love to look at molecules, there it is, okay? So the important part here is that there's a negative charge on the tail of this molecule. And the negative charge allows it to penetrate easier for a faster actor, acting skin regeneration and repair, right? So it's able to get through the barrier and, and, and do what it does in the deep dermis. So this is a peer-reviewed article from the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology, and it looked at the topical application of heparin sulfate in the treatment of photo damage. Great article, and it, it really, because of the lower molecular weight of the, the, the heparin sulfate analog um, compared to the topical hyaluronic acid, it was able to really um, get a more effective um, hydration. And here are the results. Look at the forehead. I think it's, um, these are great results. This is a study patient, 43-year-old African-American, and all she used was um, eight weeks of the 1% um, heparin sulfate analog. And you can see for yourself the improved quality in her skin, particularly like elasticity and firmness. So um, this is a product called the Dermal Repair Cream, definitely one of my favorites in the line. And um, it's kind of a, a cream that you start using and you just see different changes coming on. It's very subtle, but very effective. It's great for patients with photo damage. And it's also great for your dry, sensitive skin patients, um, your patients who you know, everything they put on burns their skin. Um, this is a great product because again, it's really working on the barrier. It's also very suitable for pre and post procedure. Okay, so the technology really addresses the multiple 
clinical signs of aging, which we all know. And then um, there's clinical science because 100% of subjects um, in an eight week study um, thought they had increased skin hydration. And of those patients, 73% thought they showed improvement in fine lines at, which we saw earlier at week eight. So, you know, pretty quick. And um, I definitely think this is a product that you want to have in your offices. Um, it comes in a kit, which is great because this is good for your pre and post procedure regimen. And in what it does, it really supports your skin healing and results in you can see that there's a cleanser, the dermal repair, which is fabulous. And then the invisible um, shield, it's a physical sunblock. So it really takes your patients through the procedure. And then they continue to use that. I think if you're living in the sun belt, this is a, a patient, this is a product you just have to really have. And the benefits of the product, um, again, it deeply hydrates the skin by attracting and retaining water. It's very calming. I talked about that, calming the skin down, which makes it great for compromised skin, um, great for post-procedure, um, because it helps the barrier, helps decrease sensitivity and helps you heal. Why? Because it promotes the stimulation of your own growth factors. So it's kind of a positive feedback. Um, it upregulates and your own growth factors start to uh, manufacture. And that's why it can reduce your healing time. So, you know, for all of the above reasons, it's, it's, it's great. Um, how do we use it? Um, the dermal repair team, you can use pre-treatment for controlling the underlying inflammation if you're preparing someone to um, have a procedure, it can control that. It's going to improve your skin resilience. It'll rebalance skin hydration because that's what we want. After we're doing a procedure, we want to give the skin everything it needs to be able to heal quickly. And, and that's what this does. Um, Post-procedure, it calms the skin quickly and it rapidly reduces post-procedure erythema. And then it improves the patient experience and, and, dis, and decreases post-procedure discomfort. So I would say, you know, in terms of the aging patient, um, this is a great little protocol you can do. You can do, you know, someone comes to you and they say, you know, I just want to do something for my skin. I'm just feeling old. I just want to perk it up. This is a great protocol. You're going to do four treatments, one a month for four months. You'll clean and prep the skin. You'll do the Neo Skin by Aerolus, which basically is a full face, okay? It's a full face treatment with the, 10, with the 650, 1040. And you're gonna do two to four passes, okay? All over the face. You might need to do more passes if you have you know, trouble, trouble spots, either darker or redder. And then you'll send them home with the kit that I showed earlier, the dermal repair kit. So this is a great rejuvenation. It's very easy, very simple. There is no downtime, zero downtime. Your patients can go back to do whatever um, they have to do, even if it is only a Zoom meeting. <laughs> they can go back with no downtime and, um, and it's just great. So you'll have four of those and you see a real difference, okay? And you only do about two to four passes. So we can give you all the specs on that. So now we're going to move to Suspera. Suspera is the new kit on the block, the new skin lightening agent. And I know many of you have heard about it. And Sente is the exclusive distributor of Suspera here in the States. Dr. Roberts, yes. we got a question here um, yes. about the pre-treatment. How soon should you begin this pre-treatment option prior to the procedure of doing aerosol? That's a great question. It, you know, you can really vary. There's no set time. As little as a week, it'd be great to do at least a week. But let's say you have a patient who you see and for some reason they can't do the procedure. You can even start the pre-treatment, you know, a month before. So you can really use it as a tool in your toolbox from anywhere from one week to four weeks before. You have flexibility with that. I find that 
when people are on a skincare to the procedure, they, they're really invested and they feel a lot better about the whole, the whole thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. So um, we talked about hyperpigmentation being the number one aesthetic concern for really everyone in skin of color. But these are just some photographs. And, um, you know, PIH can really be uh, tough. And, and it's, it's a very a tough condition in West Asian and African patients. So um, if you look at the data here, it made up 70% of the visits for aesthetic dermatologists, okay, was PIH. So it's a big, big problem. And for years, we really had nothing effective to treat it. You know, we all know what was out there. Hydroquinone did a great job, but a lot of controversy about it, especially um, in Asia and Europe, where it was even banned. Um, you know, we have a better experience with hydroquinone here in the States, probably because it's a better monitored product. However, there is a stigma with it. And, um, and, and most of our skin of color patients have already been on it. So they've done their time with hydroquinone and they're looking for something new, okay? And um, to date, there was really um, no product out there that would address the stubborn dyschromia. Um, you know, the cocktails of different products, um, you know, we would, uh, you know, I'd give lectures and, you know, having, you know, tell you to put people on three and four different products to attack every part of the pathway because there was really not one go-to product um, besides hydroquinone. So I would definitely say that the landscape was ready for an alternative to hydroquinone. We're, we're all ready and waiting for that. And this is it. Cysteamine is a very simple aminothiol, and it's actually produced in human cells from the essential amino acid cysteine. And this is the pathway through a series of ox redox reactions. You go from cysteine to this sulfated, sulfhydryl actually molecule cysteamine. And there it is, cysteamine. So let's look at where do we find cysteamine. And cysteamine is present in many mammalian tissue. However, its natural concentration is highest in human milk. And there it acts as an intrinsic antioxidant known for its protective role. So I like this story because I think in this day and age of our you know, patients um, wanting more natural ingredients, um, nothing can kind of get more natural than uh, cysteamine because it, it's present in um, mammals and, and all species, okay? So it acted as an intrinsic antioxidant. Why doesn't that surprise us, right? Because antioxidants are key in skin lightening. But let, look, let's look at the mechanism of action for cysteamine. It does many things. And as I said earlier, to be a good skin lightener, you need to attack this melanin pathway in many different areas. You just can't do one thing, right? And that's the key of this product. It has multiple effects on the melanin pathway, right? The melanogenesis, the development of melanin, I call it the melanin highway. It, it works in many different areas. It inhibits the very powerful enzyme tyrosinase. Tyrosinase has two functions in the pathway. Let's look at it. Tyrosinase takes you from tyrosine to dopa, right? Remember this? And then you go from dopa to dopoquinone, both tyrosinase. So if you can inhibit tyrosinase, you really have a leg up on decreasing um, melanin production. But in addition, it inhibits peroxidase, okay? And per peroxidase takes you from this lighter melanin to the darker melanin. And this is very key because if you can inhibit this step, then you can stop darker melanin and just get to lighter melanin. It also increases the intracellular glutathione 
glutathione, a very powerful antioxidant. So on its own, and when you have the cysteamine preventing your tyrosinase and preventing dark melanin with your in increased intracellular glutathione, which on its own does the skin lightening, you have a powerful combination. And But really important, Unlike um, hydroquinone, cysteamine is not cytotoxic. And that's part of the problem with hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is cytotoxic. Here it is. Um, this is the product by scientists. They developed a new technology that stabilized the cysteamine in a topical vehicle. And one important thing that I want to call your attention to that when they reformulated it, the odor of it significantly reduced. So there is a smell, but you know, I think patients understand that this is great. We know that it's working, there's something active in this, but um, it's, it's a very, very tolerable smell. So this is the first and only topical cream containing cysteamine hydrochlorothyroid hydrochloride and it effectively improves the appearance of, of persistent brown patches and it minimizes the recurrence of skin discoloration with continued use and let's talk about continued use continued use is very important because you don't have to have holidays from this product you know with hydroquinone you can only use it for x amount of time and then if you you know did you might risk ochronosis so um, with cysteamine, you're able to use it for continued use. We don't have any problem with prolonged use, um, you know, any side effects, um, no sequelae. And, and the other thing is that it's formulated without hydroquinone or retinol. So a very pure uh, product, a real breakthrough in terms of skin lightening. And it has a good uh, amount of evidence behind it. This is a study from the British Journal of Dermatology. There are 50 subjects. They were treating melasma, um, skin ties between three and four, uh, participants between 23 and 50. And the only thing they used besides the Sendet bar to clean themselves face was cysteamine and sunblock, of course. And the duration of the study was um, 16 weeks. This was a randomized, double-blind, vehicle-controlled study. And bottom line, the investigators and the patients were basically in agreement. 92% of the patients saw improvements in efficacy with, with Suspera, and the efficacy varied somewhere in the mild, some moderate, some excellent, okay? And 100% of the investigators saw improvements in efficacy with Suspera. And this is the breakdown of the numbers. So. You see here, this is the investigator on the left, and this is the patient. And um, I, what I want to call your attention to is the percentage of the moderate results, which was pretty amazing. 84% of the investigators said that there was a moderate response. I mean, that was great. Um, because usually you're, you know, you're hanging out in the mile, but we actually got to moderate here. And the, and the same with the patients. The patients really felt they were um, getting a result. And 4% uh, of the patients felt that they got an excellent result. And this was um, a daily application for 16 weeks. I think the next slide, we go into it. So um, it's very easy to use. Suspera is a short contact. By that, we mean that it's a 15-minute daily application that you put on and then wash off, okay? So there's two phases um, when using the, the Suspira. The first is called the intensive phase, and this is once a day for 16 weeks, and let's walk through how we do it. Now, really important, unlike other products, you don't wash the skin before you apply this, so that's important. And um, if you have to wash, let's say you're, you know, you're home from work and a lady wants to wash out her makeup off, have her wait one hour before applying the product, okay? Then you're going to apply the product to the face and you're going to just relax and leave on for 15 minutes. You're going to 
After the 15 minutes, you're going to wash the area with a gentle cleanser, patting the face dry, and then you're going to moisturize the area, maintaining skin hydration during the day. And the product that I liked was the Dermal Repair. That's a great product to use after you use this. So it, it's very um, flexible. Uh, patients can apply it morning or evening. Um, and also remember, just because you're using this to spare, you still have to use your sunblock. So this is pretty much, um, and then after the 16 weeks, you know, how often can you use it? Twice weekly, you can use it. Um, some people like to continue using it. I, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but once you get to your end line, I would recommend having your patients use it twice weekly. Oh, here are side effects, and you can kind of see them yourself. Really, really no side effects. Some of the typical things that we see, but nothing undesirable that patient wouldn't use it. Excuse me. <coughs> stinging. If your patient has stinging, just make sure that they haven't washed their face and they've done the whole hour before. Here are some cases. Here's a baseline case, four weeks, 12 weeks. I love this case. This is um, Dr. Beru's. This is only after eight weeks with a short contact, 15 minute daily application. And you can see beautiful results. So guys, this is monotherapy. I have to keep reminding everyone, this is just monotherapy. And I'm gonna comment on this case because I see this so much um, using Suspera. It really kind of cleans up a lot of the background pigmentation in our patients. You can see a much younger appearing skin after eight weeks. Same thing with this patient. Really, after four weeks, you see a much younger, better quality of peri skin with a reduction of pigmentation. And here's the dreaded PIH due to acne. This was eight weeks. Again, this is all short contact, only 15 minutes a day. Here's another patient. Now, this patient had combination treatment. They had a full face air laser elite followed by short contact. Another patient, um, she again had combination treatment, full face air lays with short contact. She only had four sessions. Got a really nice improvement. It does a really nice job on the this upper lip pigmentation. And you can see her forehead and just a much brighter complexion. So what would I do after, what, how would I have her? I would have her use the Suspera probably every night. I would take her out to about six months and then um, bring her to um, twice a week. So you can go you know, fairly long with this product. One of my favorite things to treat, pseudofolliculitis barbie, you know, your patients won't come in and complain about this. You kind of have to ask. Women cover up under makeup, very ashamed about PFB. They don't want to talk about it. They just layer on makeup. This is um, a, a, a beautiful combination three treatment where we use the, the Neo Elite um, and then Suspera. It's just such a nice treatment. And um, here she is. Um, on the left, so what, six months later, with a lot smoother, and, and what it basically does, um, for all the reasons we talked about earlier, you know, the Neo Elite, um, it dresses, it has the melanin as a chromophore, so that takes care of the hair problem. It takes care of the PIH. It has water as a chromophore, so that takes care of um, 
the scarring, the texture and tone. And that's why uh, we're able to get such great results. And then you just finish her off with the Suspera. So this is what I was speaking of earlier. It's flexible in combination with other products and procedures. Um, you can use it with retinoids, peels. I've used it with everything, alpha hydroxy acids. Um, even with oral retinoids, you can use it, okay? Um, there's no contraindication. I would, of course, um, increase the moisturization. I'd use a lot more of the dermal repair because, you know, um, our patients on oral retinoids have a little more skin sensitivity, um, sensitivity and a little bit dryness. So I would increase the moisturization and also the sun protection. And I've used it with lasers, microneedling, cryotherapy, um, uh, radio frequency. Um, it's really flexible with this. I'd say that's probably the hallmark of the Aralase and Suspera. They're both extremely flexible products. You find yourself going to it for everything. And, and that's what I like. And that's really kind of what we need, especially in these days. So we're doing a small case study to evaluate the efficacy um, and tolerability, particularly the tolerability of uh, patients that have the, uh, the air laser, laser treatment with Suspera. And we want to make sure that um, they can tolerate these treatments and we don't have any problems. Let's look at these. We're almost at the end. It's a small study, three patients, and the air laser, laser treatment was at baseline week two, week four, and six. Evaluations were done in the same period, two, four, six, eight, sixteen, and we used Suspera, and the Invisible Shield was the sunblock, Dermal Repair was the moisturizer and the cleanser. This is the protocol. Okay. All right. So these um, are actually in Fitzpatrick's three and four and this is baseline photo and here she is um, after four lasers and 16 weeks of suspera use a uh, significant lightning not only in her areas of um the melasma but the overall quality of her skin um, is significantly improved especially with the upper lip this is another patient, um, uh, Fitzpatrick three, and here she is after four lasers and six weeks after Suspera use. Again, um, you know, great results for a very stubborn product problem. And this is um, patient baseline. Um, this is after one, you see her, and then after two. So. We ran into a little COVID here, but you know, she got to use uh, four weeks of Suspera. Again, with um, considerable lightening of this area on the right upper cheek. More before and after. All right, so now we are go, are there questions? Yes, so we got to okay from the audience and then I actually had one for you as well yes. um, on your study. So um, Suspera questions. Somebody has asked is this something we can use on full face and spot treat? Um, I could speak that it could be used for both. What has been your experience Dr. Roberts? Yes absolutely both. I really like to use it full face and um, because you can see that it just improves a lot of that background um, noise, for lack of a better word, and it, and it and it's, it's an interesting product. It it also affects the spot. Now, when I first started, I didn't use it in the background. I just was very focused on the dark spots because, of course, I wanted to even it up, and I didn't want every you know I didn't want the whole face to get lighter and then it still left the dark spot. But as I became more comfortable with the product, I see it doesn't work that way. It just lightens up the dark spots and brightens up everything else. What do you think, Deepa? Yeah, absolutely. It certainly works more targeted on the hyperpigmented area. So you do not get that halo effect. It just sort of evens out the complexion, like you had mentioned. And um, 
The other question we got was Suspera can be used during daytime during high sun index climate. And I would say yes, because it is not photosensitive. How do you feel, Dr. Roberts? Yes, it can. And that's, you must live near where I live. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm in the Sun Belt. There's so much sun here. I can't even do PDT because the patients can't, you know, can't tolerate it. So um, I'm looking for things that are compatible with UV and this is. Great. And then one question I had on your study and your experience using the Aerolase plus the Suspera. How have you felt the Aerolase has been helpful for epidermal versus the dermal melasma? Because I know the dermal is so hard to reach and treat. And sometimes these multimodal approaches, especially with lasers, is like really all that you can do besides oral yeah. therapy. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, contrary to popular belief, you know, most melasma is mixed, okay? This epidermal variant of melasma is very small. And, um, you know, studies have shown that most cases of melasma are mixed. And there is just um, these patients that you can get rid of the superficial melanin, get rid of the melanosomes and the keratinocytes, and, and, but there's still this residual deep pigmentation. This is where the Aralase Neo just shines. It's able to get to that deep pigment from you know, how I showed earlier. Um, and really there's nothing out that can do that in a safe manner. You know, you, you, you will hold your breath a little when you start because you're, you're nervous about your settings, but um, once you become really comfortable with it, you, you'll be able to increase your settings and get some really nice results. So it, it, I don't know anything that gets the dermal pigment um, really better. It's, it's making treating melasma a lot easier. Great, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So now we're going to talk a little bit before I end on blowing up your revenue. I think this is really important because we're all out there, you know, um, trying to, you know, do the best we can do in a challenging time. So many options, so many people, you know, in our space. So I wanted to just um, give 10 tips to, um, to kind of jumpstart your NEO and Sente and Suspera practice. Um, one, of course, exposure, before and after photos visually displayed, and that can be in your office, Instagram, website, wherever. Um, let people know that you have this technology. It's so important. Uh, I can't tell you how many people, you know, tell me, oh my gosh, I, I'm just so glad you know skin of color. I was scared. Um, so you just have to have uh, before and after photos and signal that you are comfortable and confident with skin of color patients, especially those Fitzpatrick fours and fives. They really uh, feel like there's nothing out them for you. I recommend that when you do have a new patient, they've seen your photos and they wanna come in, that you, you highlight your credentials and show off your Aerolase technology and how do you best do that? Um, by taking an office tour. And um, a new patient should have a tour of your office and you'd be surprised at how many things they will um, see and, and connect with. And there's things that you have in your office that you don't even know connect with people and they'll say, oh, you do that or what's that about? So um, take every new patient on an office tour, and even some of your established patients, if it's been a while uh, since they've come in, say, you know what, let's just go on a tour, and I want to show you some of the new things that we have. And people love to look at the laser. They, it's a very attractive laser. It's so neat, and it's compact, and people just... Are, I think are drawn aesthetically to the Neo Elite. So they, oh, that's really cool. And that's what you're gonna be using on me. So it, 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 it's great. Um, on your intake forms, um, ask about pigmentation problems in your new patient. Paperwork, 
and then you have to speak in everyday language. So make sure that you, when you ask, you have this area. Now, do you have brown spots on your body that bother you? Do you have blemishes? You have to ask it in many different ways. Uneven skin tone, scarring, because everybody calls a brown spot something different. Some people refer to it as scarring. Some people refer to it as discoloration. So I kind of ask it all different ways. So everyone gets asked the question. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, be ready to start the treatment that day. I know that's tough, especially now because we have to kind of finesse and trim our schedules to fit into these COVID guidelines. But it's really great if you can start the treatment that day. And if you can't start the treatment that day, you can start, we talked about earlier, pre-treatment. If you can't start the treatment that day, well, let's get the products going and get everyone engaged. Um, I like to give, I don't have this down here, I like to give people a calendar. So they actually leave the office with a calendar and they know like, okay, I started my products this day, I'm gonna do my treatment, and they leave with it and feel really confident that it just signals that you're looking at the whole picture and they feel confident. And that's really, uh, I think, the differentiation of why you go to one practice or another. A lot of it is confidence and comfort level that people know that you are with them and you're thinking of them. Have a, um, a happy environment. Um, you know, they're just not coming to see you, but they're coming to your office. And, you know, when you come to my office, you have an experience. And the experience starts with my pleasant staff, you know, greeting you and, and caring about you. Well, how are you today? Do you need anything? You need to go to the restroom? Do you need water? Do you, how are you doing? So I think that caring from the very minute you, people step into your office, they've got to feel that you care about them. And that caring will go a long way when it comes to um, putting their face in your hands or, you know, their body, right? So I missed out a few tips here. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll move to this slide, but those are, um, those are big tips. And um, newsletters, if you don't do a newsletter, it, you know, that would be great. Or an email blast where you send it out to your patients, letting them know about the technology. Of course, you know, having your, your staff actually talk about it. And then also, um, don't forget on your full body skin examinations, as you're working your way over people's skin, you're not just looking for skin cancer, okay? You're looking for other things that are um, disorders that maybe people are interested in. So let's say if you um, are doing a full body skin exam on a man and you see you know, that he has back acne, right? Um, that's something that is beautifully treated with the you know, with the neo Lee, you know it does a great job on acne, and you might say you know I've got a great laser um, that can you know treat your acne um, and do a little hair removal as well, and uh, and really kind of talk about those things and the attributes of the device, um, and 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 get that into everything you're kind of doing. So the full body skin exam is perfect time to bring up things that. Oftentimes people don't think to ask you or they've forgotten or they're embarrassed about. So um, now let's look at some revenue generation figures. This is my practice. And um, in 2018 to 2019, the office made $157,100 in NEO revenue. And just follow, I want just follow along with this slowly with me because this is not like I'm banging out the procedures here, okay? So this is kind of just uh, uh, you know I have a hybrid practice. I I do derm path, I do surgery, I do med derm, you know fillers. But so I'm just kind of doing everything, okay? And and this is revenue that was made. So what that breaks down to is about thirteen thousand per month. Okay, so the average facial treatment in my area that I charge for the Neo is $700, okay? That may be high, maybe not high, 
but I, I have a lower scenario with all two. So what at $700, it basically went to 18 treatments per month, okay? I only have a four day week. So when you do the math with a four day week, it turns out that you can, I made that revenue with less than one treatment per day. Okay, less than one for the bad day and you can miss a treatment, but maybe the next day you have two, but less than one treatment a day. Okay, so even if you take, I did an alternate scenario. If you bring the price down to $500 per treatment, right? And let's say, you have you work on Fridays or whatever you have a five day work week, okay, and you're able to do 20 treatments a month over a 12 month period. You can have that hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of revenue, okay? Oh, no, actually, that's over a four day week, excuse me. So, that's still a four day week, a hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of revenue. And you've, you've, you've notched it up. So to treatment a day, only one treatment a day. You know, because a lot of times when we're given numbers, and I'm very sensitive to this, you know, people say, oh, you know, you just have to do so many treatments a month and you're going to pay off the laser and, you know, that kind of, we've all heard it. But I wanted to just kind of see, you know, what kind of pressure that, I would be under, or that I actually did this retrospectively, that I was under, you know, how did it actually turn out that I made this $157,000 in one year, right? Less than one treatment a day, okay? Now, compare that to another tool in our toolbox for anti-aging. I love it, so it's no knock against it. It's Botox, okay? So Botox, you have a profit of about $600 per vial, kind of average. When you buy a vial of Botox, you're gonna make about $600 per vial from that. Let's say you do five vials a week, okay, of Botox. You make $144,000, which is less than you've made with the Neo. But guess what? How many patients did you have to see to get that same revenue, okay? So you can do a treatment a day, price at $500 in treatment, and over a year period, make $120,000. Or you can run around trying to do five vials of toxin a week and make 144000 so that's the whole point of this slide. It's about working smarter, not harder. Now, if you can do it all, it's even better than, you know, your income, you know, is the boom. But I'm just saying, I wanted to really lay this out. And I hope I have that um, you're, we're working smarter because, you know, you're, you're seeing less patients. And this really is kind of where we are right now with COVID. We, we may not have all the patients that we had pre-COVID. You may not be able to go through five vials of, of toxin in a week, um, but you can do one, one case, one airlace case. So in summary, um, it's a great way to grow your practice. This, the Neo, Elite, Sente, and Suspera, it, it's just a great trio. And I think it keeps you in a nice level high because you're having the state of the art technology. It differentiates yourself from other practitioners in your area. You also have an opportunity to elevate yourself to be a provider who's comfortable with skin of color, especially if you are not a skin of color physician. You can really be somebody who is comfortable with skin of color. And, um, and that counts a lot because I'm telling you, patients are looking for people who are comfortable with skin of color. They don't want complications. 
and and we just talked about working more efficiently and this way you can balance what you enjoy doing with profitability and then lastly because i do look at everything from a generational lens i will say that you are able to market to your existing patients and their families because you know in the teenager you're treating acne and then in her mother you're doing prevention and photo damage prevention and then in the grandmother you might be doing litigities and then hey and the dad you might be doing hair removal so you can do all of this with just one laser and it resembles really that that family doctor i call it the family dermatologist so there's lots of opportunities for revenue growth and exciting times thank you and Dr. i think talk so thank, thank you, you everyone we have some questions um, yes aerolase neo for deep pigments now do you ever add ice for these patients yes i do okay and then yes, i think you know ice never hurts yeah and would you say um, this is a laser that you could easily delegate out to your laser technicians or mid-levels with your, um, yeah. obviously with, with your supervision? Oh, yes. Yeah, you really can. It's very safe. I, you know, I do all my cases, but I would definitely have no problem, you know, delegating it because, it, you know, the, the safety is built into the device and that's unique. Um, they've already thought about the safety issues. And you'll get a nice handbook that has great protocols in it that literally is like a recipe book. You can turn the page and it says, you know, hair removal and this skin type and this is what you do. And I didn't speak about that a lot. But one of the things that has impressed me about this company is that they actually took the time to make this killer handbook that you can just look at it and do the settings and, and it turns out right. So yes, you can definitely ha delegate this to extenders. I would feel very comfortable delegating this. That's great. Um, are there any more questions for the, from the audience for Dr. Roberts on any of the technologies or increasing your revenue with the combination? All right. Um, thank you so much for, for your time, Dr. Roberts, and for your expertise and your pearls of wisdom. We really appreciate this. Oh, it's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank Take you, care, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.